Welcome to lecture video four. This is part two of our trig integration. So how did you do with a problem in the last video? So here it is. Did you give it a shot? Were you successful or did you get stuck? So either way, let's do it together now and just see how you did. So my first thought is to take this integral. I'm going to rewrite it as tangent to the six. So I'm not going to change those. This secant to the fourth, I could split it into secant squared, secant squared. And now I have an idea in mind, which is why I'm doing that. But let me do one more thing. So this is equal to the integral of tangent to the sixth. Secant squared is one of our identities over here. I, I alluded to that last time. So it's this, which is tangent squared plus 1. And I'm going to leave the other secant squared alone because I see something now that I want. If I make a u substitution and I let u be tangent of x, du, the derivative, is going to be secant squared dx. And that's right there, and I'm going to be able to get rid of that. So if I make my u substitution now, u is tangent, so I'm going to get u to the sixth power. This is going to be times u squared plus 1. And then secant squared dx is identically du. And now, if I go ahead and distribute that, I get u to the eighth plus u to the sixth du. And then if I integrate that, that's u to the ninth over 9 plus u to the seventh over 7 plus c. So I've successfully integrated it. And then I just got to plug back in u. So u is tangent. So I have tangent to the ninth. Um, our original variable was x. OK, good, over 9 plus tangent to the 7 over 7 plus c. So I made use of the fact that the derivative of tangent is secant squared, and I manipulated the integral to make things work out like that. Now, I'm pretty weird, but I'm not super weird. Um, there is a reason why I have the word toast is written here. This is another mnemonic device I have that will help you remember what to do when you're dealing with this specific situation of tangents and secants. So what you're looking for is the power of tangent to be odd, or you'd like to see that the power of secant is even. In one of those two cases, we can kind of do this systematic process just like we did with the, the sines and cosines. And remember, with the sine and cosine integrals, I want at least one of them to be odd. That's good. If one of them is odd, I can, I can do it. Otherwise, if they're both even, I do that power reduction formula, which I'm not a fan of. But these are, the, these are the two good cases. So in this one, you saw I had that secant was even. I didn't have that tangent was odd, but I had this case right here. I had an even secant. So I could do this process, which will work every time. You take one of the secant squareds put it off to the side, and turn the rest into tangents. Now, you can probably guess that this is the other one that works out really nice. So I'm going to show you an example of this. So here, tangent is odd, and secant is odd. So it doesn't apply for that, but tangent is odd. Um, so we can actually do this one as well. So let me um, show you what you would do in this case. So we have this. What I'm going to do now with it is I'm going to turn this into tangent to the fourth secant to the sixth, and then I'm taking one of each. I'm actually going to grab one of both of them, and it's going to be secant theta tangent theta d theta. So secant tangent is the derivative of secant, so that's why I've cleverly picked those. So I've taken one from each, put it right there, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, turn these into um, secants, I believe. What I'd like to do first is I'd like to say that this is tangent squared squared, and this is secant to the sixth, secant theta, tangent theta. And then what I'd like to do is go ahead, I'm just doing every step. Tangent squared here is this. It's secant squared minus 1 squared. And I have secant to the sixth, secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. And now, if I let u equal secant theta, that means du is 
secant theta tangent theta. So now I'm going to go ahead and make the substitution. So I'm going to get the integral of u squared minus 1 squared times u to the sixth. Secant tangent theta gets replaced with du. And this is pretty straightforward, just like all of our other ones. So if you FOIL this, you get u to the fourth minus 2u squared plus 1 times u to the sixth. And then just making sure you can still see this, if I distribute these, I'm going to get u to the tenth minus, and then I'm going to get 2u to the eighth, and then I'll get plus u squared. So now we have to integrate that. So I'm going to do that right down here. So I get u to the 11th over 11 minus 2 over 9 u to the 9th plus u to the 7th over 7 plus c. This looks very suspicious here, but this is just a 2. Let me just try to fix that for you guys and just make a, a more of a mess of it. So there's that. And then just like all the other ones, I've run out of room, but just like all the other ones, instead of u, you're going to plug in the secant theta. So secant theta will be plugged in for each of these, and then you're done. OK, so just to recap, this determines for you whether you're in one of the two situations where you can do these integrals like this. In the first case, secant is even. So the strategy is to take two secants and put them to the side. Then you turn the rest of them into tangents. In this case, tangent is odd. So what you do is you remove a secant tangent off to the side and turn the rest of everything into secants. OK. Well, what happens if you don't have one of these two cases? Well, lots of nightmarish stuff could happen, actually. Um, what I'm going to do is build up a couple more rules for you to have so that when you encounter those integrals, it will not be so bad. First rule I want to talk about is the integral of tangent. We know the derivative of tangent is secant squared, but we don't really have a, at least I didn't teach a rule in calculus 1 for the integral of tangent. But we can actually get there. Tangent is the same thing as sine over cosine. And we have a strategy to integrate something like this. Um, you see sine and you see it's a derivative here. So what do you think it could be? Um, if you're thinking u substitution, you're correct. So if you let u be cosine, that means du is negative sine of x dx. And then let's plug that in. So then this is going to be equal to, um, I have negative du because sine of x got replaced. And cosine is u. How do I integrate 1 over u? Well, that's ln. We do have that rule from calculus 1 as well. So this is negative ln of u plus c. However, u was cosine of x plus c. And then for this, one of the log rules says you can take any constant that's in front and bring it up as the power. So you have log of cosine of x raised to the negative 1 power. This is not the inverse symbol. This is a negative 1 power. And then 1 over cosine, the reciprocal, is secant. So right here, for this list of rules, I'm finishing the, the complete list now. So I've just proved to you that the integral of tangent of x is the natural log absolute value of secant x plus c. Add that to your uh, flashcards if you have them going. Very similarly, the integral of cotangent, you can do the exact same method I did here, is going to be ln of absolute value of sine of x plus c. If you want to check that, if you don't believe me, do the same process. Do the integral of cotangent and do a u sub. This one is a little more tricky. Um, let's work with this one. So this is sec integral of um, secant x. Now a very unintuitive first step to, to prove this is you multiply the top and the bottom of this by secant x plus tangent x. So you do that in the numerator and the denominator. That's not supposed to make sense why you should do that. There's no like logical really 
reason why that's the next step. Someone just tried it and it worked one day and I'm just showing you the steps. So my goal here is to prove to you this is true. I, there's not really necessarily a reason why that would have to be the first step. But let's keep going with it. So please just trust me. Um, I'll just say that all year long, just please trust me with this math. So distribute this secant x. I'm going to get secant squared x plus secant x tangent x all over secant x plus tangent x dx. So all I've done is I've taken this secant and distributed it to the numerator. Remember, it's over 1, so I just need to do this to the numerator. Similar to what I just did here, I'm going to do a u substitution. So we're going to let u be the denominator. It's going to be secant x tangent x. Again, I think this is really one of the first parts of the class so far where the, the, the choices I'm making are not very intuitive. Like, why would you do that for this? And also for this choice, why would you know to do this? That we're proving something is true, so it doesn't really matter why. It's, I'm just showing you that it does work. The derivative of u here is going to be derivative of secant is secant x tangent x. And the derivative of tangent is secant squared x. And the thing to note, the insight to have, is that is exactly what the numerator is. So all of this numerator is going to get replaced with du, which is very, very nice. So the entire numerator is du. And I called the denominator u. We just did this integral before. Integral of 1 over u is ln absolute value of u. And my u was secant x plus tangent x. So this is the answer to the integral of secant. So I'll write that to start finishing this here. So this is the natural log of secant x plus tangent x in the absolute value bars plus c. And I'm just going to tell you a very similar calculation with a very similar unintuitive first step and stuff like that. A very similar process shows you that the integral of cosecant is negative ln absolute value of cosecant of x plus cotangent of x plus c. Now, I feel that if you have all of these, a very good working memory of all of these formulas, there's almost no trig integral that you should ever encounter that you can't do. Uh, it is a lot of stuff to know, but the more of it that you're familiar with, the better off you're going to be. And in order of importance, if I could even tell you that, these are absolutely necessary. You have to know these. These are kind of necessary because there's not as many problems on these. And then these, these two right here are supremely helpful. Same with these. They speed up the, the process of some of these problems by so much just by knowing these. So I, I really gave you the most critical things that I think you're going to need to know for lecture three and four. But I'm not done yet. Just because the board's filled up doesn't mean I'm done yet. So I'm going to get this erased, and we're going to do a few more practice problems just to get you really confident with this stuff. So I'll see you in just a moment. All right, welcome back. So here I have three more integrals for us to finish this lecture off with. I'm going to pester you again by saying, I think you should stop the video. Give these three a try and see what you can do. That's the best way for you to learn. This is interesting because I've given you the final pair, the cotangent cosecant one. That's the third formula here. So you could try this with a brand new pair, and you'll notice cosecant and cotangent's derivatives are very similar to secant and tangent's derivatives. So that's not too much for me to ask you to do these because they're extremely similar to the secant tangent integrals. OK, I'll see you when you're done. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So here's tangent to the third power. I'm going to rewrite this as tangent x times tangent squared x dx. And then from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute. So this is tangent of x times secant squared of x minus 1 dx. So that's using the second formula here and rearranging this for tangent. Now what I can do is I can take this tangent and distribute across. So I'm going to get the integral of tangent x secant squared minus tangent x dx. And what I can do with this is I can consider this as two separate integrals. So I'm going to do two problems. The first one 
is tangent x secant squared. And then minus, and the other integral is the integral of tangent x dx. Now, the first one here is a u substitution. We can actually use the toes mnemonic here. The tangent is odd and the secant is even. So this is, we can definitely do this one. So if I can just do some work down here, I'm going to say u is tangent x. And then if u is tangent x, du is going to be secant squared x dx, which is right here. So this is going to turn into u for tangent. Secant squared dx is going to be du. And all I have here then is the integral of u minus. And this is why I said before that this pays off to know some of these lesser known rules. The integral of tangent is ln secant x. So this is going to be ln absolute value of secant x. Because I know that, I'm just done with that part. That's great. And then here I'm just going to integrate this. This is 1 half u squared minus ln of secant x plus c. Let me write my final answer over here. So I'm just going to plug u back in, and I get tangent squared over 2 minus ln of secant x plus c. And this is my final answer. Certainly a little tricky, but definitely you could have managed to do that one. Um, if, you, if anything went wrong, make note of the spot where it went wrong, and next time it won't happen. Here's this one. So this is secant to the third power. Here we're normally looking for um, secant to be to an even power. And there's no tangents here. So this is not one of the integrals we could do normally based on this, um, this rule over here. So I'm actually going to do something that I don't blame you for not thinking of if you didn't do it. First, I'm going to separate this into secant x times secant squared. And I'm going to bring back an old classic, because once we're done with all of these integration techniques, we're going to have to put them all together anyway. So I'm going to bring back integration by parts. And some of you are probably screaming, and you punched the, the computer screen. But because of the rules I have over here and my rules from Calculus 1, I know the integral and the derivative of these things kind of forward and backwards. So I should be able to create an integration by parts chart using the tabular method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let u be the thing I can most easily take the derivative of, which is secant. And my dv is going to be what's left over, which is secant squared x dx. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. And the integral of secant squared is tangent. So I was able to complete this whole box for the integration by parts here. And this first row is a plus, and the second row is a minus. And now I'm going to write out what I get and see if I'm able to do that. So this is equal to the first diagonal multiplied together, which is secant x tangent x. And then minus, and this is a, um, a, a row here, so I have to leave this in the integral. This is minus tangent squared secant x dx. And this is supposed to be equal to the, the integral. So this equals the integral of secant cubed x dx. OK, so now from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this. So let me say that this is secant x tangent x. Tangent squared, if you use the formula over there, is secant squared minus 1 and times another secant here. And this is supposed to be equal to the integral of secant cubed x. Remember, this whole um, integration by parts formula equals the original integral. Just like the previous problem, I'm going to distribute now. I'm going to distribute and break that up into two integrals. So this is going to be secant x tangent x minus secant times secant squared is secant cubed. So this is the integral of secant cubed x. And then here, I have a minus in front, and I have a minus here. So overall, it's going to be plus, And this is 1 times secant, which is secant x dx, equals the integral of secant cubed x dx. And this is a concept we saw 
in our integration by parts video. There's a kind of a circular thing going on here. You see, in the answer to our problem is the problem itself sitting in here. We want to know what the integral of secant cubed is. In our problem, we have another one of them. So I'm going to add this over to the right side. And I'm going to get secant x tangent x. The integral of secant, we have that rule right over here. The integral of secant is ln of secant x plus tangent x plus c equals. And if I add one of them over here, I get 2 integral of secant cubed x dx. So then the very final step to figure out what the integral of secant cubed x is, I just divide this by 2. So the final answer is 1 half times all that stuff I had before, secant x tangent x plus ln of secant x plus tangent x plus c. So this is the answer to the integral of secant cubed x dx. Okay. Very, very tricky, for sure. And here I brought back the whole integration by parts thing and the circular kind of thing. So very tricky. I'm interested to see how you did on this last one. Because up until now, we have not done an integral that had the final pair, cotangent, cosecant. But let's see how you did. So I'm going to rewrite this as cotangent squared, cosecant squared. And then I'm going to have a cotangent, cosecant off to the side. So similar to one of the other problems, I just took one from each of them, brought this over here. And then what am I going to do next? I'm going to, I'm going to substitute this cotangent squared out. Cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared minus 1. So cotangent squared is cosecant squared minus 1 times cose cosecant squared times cotangent cosecant. And now I'm going to make a u substitution. So if I say, <laughs> sorry, that was me just kicking over the, the spray for the board. Oops. OK, so if I say u is cosecant x, the derivative is negative cosecant x cotangent x dx. And that's exactly what I have over here. So I'm going to replace that. Cosecant is u, so I get u squared minus 1. Here is a u squared. And then cotangent x cosecant x gets replaced by du. I just need to make sure I have a negative sign in front of it. So this is equal to negative the integral of u to the fourth minus u squared. So that u squared distributes. And then I'm going to integrate this and just make sure I flip the sign because the negative is in front. So I get u to the fifth over 5. That one's negative. And then I get plus, because I distribute this negative in, plus u to the third over 3, plus c. And apart from plugging in the cosecant, I'm done. But I'll plug this in. So I get cosecant to the fifth over 5. It's negative, plus cosecant to the third over 3, and then plus c. So one more thing I want to say about that is the cotangent cosecant integrals are essentially the same exact strategies as doing the secant tangent ones. So once you study them enough and get really comfortable with the, co the secant tangent integrals, those rules directly transfer over to the cotangent cosecant ones. All right, and those are all three types of the trig integrals, and I even covered some of the special cases. Thank you so much for watching. As always, email me if you have any questions, and I will see you in class. Have a nice day.